Hi everyone! Today you're going to take notes by watching this video 3-7 Add and Subtract Fractions. Please watch the entire video and fill out the notes. I will be checking for them tomorrow. So we're going to start with like denominators. When we add or subtract fractions that have the same denominator, what we do is we add or subtract the numerators first. N-U-M-E-R-A-T-O-R-S we keep the denominator the same and simplify the fraction if possible. So you can see here in this diagram, this is just using letters instead of numbers. But let's take a look at an example. Take a moment to write down the example 6 and 3 ninths minus 4 and 1 ninth. Since both fractions have the same denominator of 9, we are allowed to subtract. So our first step is to take a look at the whole numbers and subtract the whole numbers. 6 minus 4 gives us 2. In step 1, we add or subtract the numerators. In this case, 3 minus 1 gives us 2. And step 2 says to keep the denominator the same. You cannot simplify 2 ninths. Therefore, our answer is 2 and 2 ninths. But what happens when our fractions have unlike denominators. Let's look in the middle column. Starting at number one, find the common denominator using either the ladder method to find big L, or you can even list out the multiples. So step two tells us to rewrite the fractions and add or subtract the numerators, and we keep the same denominator and simplify our fraction if possible. We're gonna take a look at this example here, one half plus one third. The denominators are different, so what we need to do is find a common denominator, preferably the least common, and then follow the steps. Take a moment to rewrite this example on your notes. We need to find a common denominator for 2 and 3. If you list the multiples for 2, you get 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. And if you list the multiples for 3, 3, 6, 9, 12, and so on. You can see that they do share a least common multiple of 6. So what our goal is, is to make the denominator of both fractions a 6. 2 times 3 is 6. So in your notes, you're going to show that you're multiplying the numerator and denominator by 3. And 1 half becomes 3 over 6. These are equivalent fractions. Now, 1 third also needs a denominator of 6, but this time we have to multiply 3 by 2. So 1 times 2 and 3 times 2 will give us an equivalent fraction of 2 6. Then when I add the fractions together, we follow the steps. The numerators, 3 plus 2, give us 5, and we keep the denominator of 6. 5 sixth is completely simplified, so that is our answer. There is one more way to add fractions that have different denominators, and it's more of an algebraic method, but this works only for addition. So take a look at the last column. In step one, we cross multiply. So if you look at the example, we have two and three that are across from one another, and two times three is six. Then we can cross multiply five times one to get five. We add the numerators, so six plus five is 11, and then we have to multiply the denominators, three times five is 15. So two-fifths plus one-third is eleven-fifteenths. Take a moment to write down the example two-fifths plus one-eighth. This is not my favorite strategy because it doesn't always give you the least common multiple, but it is another option for you. So now let's take a look at two-fifths plus one-eighth. Our first step is to cross-multiply. So on your paper, circle or highlight two and eight. And what we do is multiply 2 times 8, and I put the 16 down below. Then we cross multiply the other direction, and we get 5 times 1, which will give us 5. So after you multiply 
diagonally or cross multiply, then we have to take the denominators and multiply them. 5 times 8 is 40, and that's our denominator. Our last step is to add our numerators, so 16 plus 5 is 21 over 40. And if you can simplify, simplify, but in this case, we have completely reduced our fraction to its lowest form, 21 fortieths. Please take a moment to write down all of these notes. And to summarize this page, there are three ways that we can find a common denominator. We can either list them out by writing the first few multiples and finding the first common one, like we did in the middle column example. Number two, we can find the least common multiple, which is also the least common denominator when working with fractions. And we can use the latter method to find big L. And we can also use the quick common denominator method, which is the one that we just did in the last column. Now flip to the back of your notes. We're going to take a look at Foursquare, which is a tool to organize your math work with fractions. So in the first box, let's write this problem. 1 and 5 sixths plus 3 fourths. So step 1 is our main problem. Notice the 6 and the 4 do not have the same denominator. So for step 2, we need to find a common denominator using the ladder method or listing out the multiples. For this example, I will be using the ladder method. So a common factor that will evenly divide into 6 and 4 would be 2. 6 divided by 2 gives us 3, and 4 divided by 2 gives us 2. We make the next ring of the ladder, and because 3 and 2 only have a common factor of 1, we know we can stop. From here, since we're finding the least common multiple, we have to multiply big L. So finish your ladder and highlight big L. The least common multiple is found by multiplying the numbers in big L. So 2 times 1 times 3 times 2. 2 times 1 is 2, 3 times 2 is 6, giving us a least common multiple of 12. Now I know what to change my two denominators to. In order to get the 6 and the 4 to become a 12, we need to think about what number can we multiply those two denominators by to make 12. So let's start with 1 and 5 sixths. 6 times 2 is 12. And whatever you do to the denominator, you do to the numerator. So our new fraction can be rewritten in step 3 as 1 and 10 twelfths. 1 and 5 sixths and 1 and 10 twelfths are equivalent fractions. They just look different. For 3 fourths, in order to get 4 to become 12, we need to multiply 4 by 3. And we multiply 3 by 3, giving us, instead of 3 fourths, 9 twelfths. These are also equivalent fractions. The last step of four square is to simplify your answer. So let's first figure out what our answer equals. I have a whole number, 1. I add my numerators 10 plus 9, which is 19, over the denominator 12. But wait, this is, a, this is an improper fraction within a mixed number. So what we need to do now is take 19 twelfths and rewrite it. So 12 fits into 19 one time with 7 twelfths remaining. Then I take my whole number and add them together. So my final answer in simplest form is 2 and 7 twelfths. Please make sure that you have all of these notes as I will be checking for them tomorrow. Now it's your turn. I'd like you to use the four square method to find the answer to eight and two thirds minus five and four ninths. Once you finish this problem, please go back to the assignment in Google Classroom where you will find mild, medium, and spicy problems to complete. Please choose one level and show your work on lined paper. You may use any strategy that's on the front of your notes. Have a great day.